this is a pretty simple lesson this week. We're going to use JavaScript to change some of the CSS code in our web pages. This is a really common change where you'll use a smaller and larger letter A with a link to itself that will call a JavaScript function. When I have the smaller A here, and I've only programmed this one because I'm going to leave it to your homework to program the larger one, but if I click on it, it will make the font size smaller for the whole page. I've also added a JavaScript function that will actually call a completely different style sheet set up for print. Right now, if I were to print this, the background would go away, but the colors would be red and um, purple, just like they are here. And for print, I prefer my text to be black and white. You'll notice when I click this that my little font changes here will also disappear because I don't want them to be available in the printable version. When I click the printable version, it's going to change my style sheet, and then in the last step, it's going to reset my font size back to the original size. So this is much more friendly for printing. Everything's in black and white except for the images. Um, I do want to be able to swap back. I haven't programmed that. That's again left for homework. So let's take a look at how I set it up. I have three files. I have changecss.javascript for web CSS and I actually also have a for print CSS and with the print one I change it to a serif font and in either case I set the content and notice I'm doing it with an ID my content is an ID not a class because I'm changing the content by ID so I set the font size back to 16 pixels and then I've done something here. I have the font change class, which would just have anything I wanted to be hidden in it. Um, on this one, I'm just setting that to a visibility of hidden. On my print version, that font change actually is setting color. It's floating it to the right. It's setting a width. It's setting a margin. It's clearing. Um, floats above it and setting a text aligned to the left because you'll see when I'm in design view this is actually just a little div tag inside my header div so I could stack them nicely and put it right in the corner there um, without having to line it up here so I have two completely different style sheets for web and for print let's take a look at my source code before we get into the JavaScript So I'm stacking several class, um, I'm stacking several divisions inside of each other. I've got a container, I've got content, header, and font change. Now it's important that I'm using the div ID here because I'm getting my elements by ID. My two references for my low, smaller and larger A, they both have an href of a pound sign, which just makes it linked to itself. But that gives us the ability to use the on click function and call either smaller or larger, two functions that we would write in the JavaScript. I've written the smaller function. Then I have another link in here, which is calling change view, and the link says click here for a printable version. Let's look at the JavaScript. So I have my standard function here where we're setting the dollar sign to be equal to document get element by ID. I've set a variable named my font and I've set it to a size of 12. That is actually not what I want to do. That should be set to a size of 16, the initial size of my font. Let's go ahead and save that. So it was getting smaller a little faster than I intended. And then I'm changing the content style. I'm setting my font when we call the function smaller. I set it my font equal to itself minus one. So every time you click the A, it should go down in size by one pixel. So I'm using the content dot style dot font size, and in JavaScript, it has a capital F S because you can't put a hyphen in it, so it's Camelback equals my font plus px. Then I've got my change view function. I have variable 
old link equals document get element by tag name link item zero. Now when you're using the document object model for programming, we're getting the element by tag name. The link it returns a list of every link in the page. And the first item, the zero item, the first link in your HTML is actually in your um, header here where you have the link href. So it's looking for this link title. And it's the first one on the page. We're in an array, so it always starts counting with zero. Then we have a new link, document.createElement link. So we're creating an element of a link type. New link, we're going to set the attributes so it's style sheet, text CSS, for print.css so that we will change this so that we'll replace it. So we're going to again use the get element by tag name, head dot item zero, replace child, new link, old link. So this is we're replacing new link with the we're replacing the old link with the new link. It's swapping them. And then again, I set us back to a size 16 font because otherwise the previous font changes that I went through in JavaScript, they're going to carry over. So again, let's take a quick look at that since I changed the font size to minus one pixel. So you see, we can keep clicking it and every time I click it, it will go down one pixel in size. So for your homework, I want you to finish this. I want you to have the plus size working and I want you to create your own web page. Don't use mine. Create your own style sheet for web, style sheet for print, and I, when you go to the printable version, I want you to change here the text in this link. So you're going to have to set an ID for it to um, click here for web version and I want you to take it back.